The first presidential debate was as horrific as we feared it would be. Can I be honest? It's a very important Try to question. Be honest. No, he I stood good up. No, he stood I, up I, the answer to the question threatened. is no. We were barely able to hear a word from Joe Biden or moderator Chris Wallace thanks to Trump's incessant interruptions and nonstop insults. We have the highest deficit, trade deficit China with Mexico. Your lunch, All right, gentlemen, it's clearly not true. You're, you're, you're doing it. You're going to have tape. true, gentlemen. Here are the most revealing moments from last night's debate. Number one, Trump refused to disavow white supremacy. What do you want to call him? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacist and white supremacist. Like white proud supremacist boys. Boys. and right proud proud boys. Boys. Stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left. He reiterated his baseless claims that anti-fascist groups and left-wing organizers were the ones causing violence, a narrative contradicted by multiple studies and his own national security officials. The violence Trump claims is the greatest threat facing our country does not exist. The latest draft of the Department of Homeland Security's Threat Assessment Report characterizes white supremacy as the, quote, most persistent and lethal threat to national security. Number two, both Biden and Trump showed us who they really are. You graduated either the lowest or almost the lowest in your class. Don't ever use the word smart with me. Don't ever use that word. Oh, give me a break. Because you know what? There's nothing smart about you, Joe. One of Biden's most powerful moments was when he talked about his deceased son, Bo. My son was in Iraq. He spent a year there. He got the, he got the Bronze Star. He got the Conspicuous Service Medal. He was not a loser. He was a patriot. And the people left behind oh, there really? were heroes. Really? And I resent Are you talking like about Hunter? Hell. Are you talking about I'm Hunter? I'm talking about my son, Bo Biden. I was struck by Biden's raw humanity in this moment. And how did Trump respond? By interrupting him and launching nonsensical attacks on Biden's other son, Hunter. Somebody Paul gets here. three and a half million okay, dollars right. from the Let's mayor of about, Moscow. Let's that talk about not true. true. That thing. report is totally Why discredited. Did he get it? I, Trump revealed the core of who he is, a cruel narcissist who has no feelings for anybody but himself. And Biden revealed who he is, a decent human being who understands the plight of loss at a time when Americans everywhere are losing their loved ones. Number three, Trump kept dodging questions about his tax returns. I know that you pay a lot of other taxes, but I'm asking you the specific question. Is it true that you paid $750 in federal income taxes each of those two years? I paid millions of dollars in taxes, millions of dollars of income tax. And let me just tell you, there was a story in one of the papers. Show I paid, your I paid $38 million one year. I paid $27 million Show us your tax year. returns. I went, uh, you'll see it as soon as it's finished. You'll see it. For four years, Trump has been promising to release his tax returns, but has never followed through. Tonight was no different. He dodged Chris Wallace's questions about the bombshell New York Times report that found he paid only $750 in federal taxes in 2016. And when Biden challenged him to release his tax returns so the American people could see for themselves, Trump said, you'll see it as soon as it's finished. Hello? It's been four years. If Trump wants to refute the New York Times story, all he has to do is voluntarily release his returns. But he refuses to do so, and we know exactly why. Number four, Trump touted his record on judiciary nominations, but he left out some important details. When asked about their respective records, the bulk of Trump's response was hyperbole and nonsense. There has never been an administration or president who has done more than I've done in a period of three and a half years. And that's despite the impeachment hoax. And you saw what happened today with Hillary Clinton, where it was a whole big con job. But despite going through all of these things where I had to fight both flanks and behind me and, uh, and above, there has never been an administration that's done what I've done. The greatest, before COVID came in, the greatest economy in history, lowest unemployment numbers. Everything was good. Everything was going. And by the way, there was unity going to happen. But one aspect he made sure to highlight was his takeover of the courts. He's appointed 202 federal judges so far, and he didn't miss an opportunity to go after Biden either. And you know one of the reasons I'll have so many judges? Because President Obama and him left me 128 judges to fill. 
When you leave office, you don't leave any judges. That's like you just don't do that. Trump turned his takeover of the courts into an attack on Biden and Obama's inability to confirm judges. What Trump failed to mention was that Mitch McConnell refused to confirm any of Obama's judicial nominees, most notably his Supreme Court pick Merrick Garland. And then, once Trump was elected, McConnell changed the confirmation rules so that the Republican-held Senate could ram through every single one of Trump's picks, as he's now trying to do with Amy Coney Barrett. Number five, yet again, Trump refused to accept responsibility for our staggering COVID-19 death toll. If we would have listened to you, the country would have been left wide open. Millions of people would have died, not 200,000, and one person is too much. It's China's fault. It should have never happened. They stopped it from going in, but it was China's fault. Trump compared his response to COVID-19 to the Obama-Biden administration's response to swine flu. H1N1, you were a disaster. Your own chief 14, of staff said 000, you were a disaster. 14,000 people died, not 200,000. There was a no very, economic wait, 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 recession. Like, but the 2009 swine flu pandemic killed approximately 12,500 Americans, compared to the more than 200,000 Americans who have died from COVID-19 so far on Trump's watch. Trump also floated yet another insane conspiracy theory, this time claiming... You take a look at what's happening at some of your Democrat-run states where they have these tough shutdowns, and I'm telling you it's because they don't want to open it. One of them came out last week, you saw that. Oh, we're going to open up on November 9th. Why November 9th? Because it's after the election. While Trump has said that the virus affects virtually nobody, Biden made a point to empathize with the hundreds of thousands of Americans who have lost loved ones to COVID. You folks at home, how many of you got up this morning and had an empty chair at the kitchen table because someone died of COVID? How many of you were in a situation where you lost your mom or dad and you couldn't even speak to them? You had a nurse holding a phone up so you could, in fact, say goodbye. You would have lost far how more many people. people. Far that more is, people. And, you would have been and by the way, late. Your own, you his, 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 own, his own CDC director says we could lose as many as another 200,000 people between now and the end of the year. And he held up, he said, if we just wear a mask, we can save half those numbers. Just, just a mask. Number six, Trump ramped up his conspiracies about voting by mail. He rehashed practically every one of his conspiracy theories about the previous administration, and he doubled down on his lies about mail-in voting. They're sending millions of ballots all over the country. There's fraud. They found them in creeks. They found some with the name Trump. Just happened to have the name Trump just the other day in a waste paper basket. They're being sent all over the place. They sent two in a Democrat area. They sent out a thousand ballots. Everybody got two ballots. This is going to be a fraud like you've never seen. Here's the truth. The right wing Heritage Foundation examined a 36-year time frame and found only 1,285 cases of voter fraud involving mail-in ballots out of nearly 2 billion votes cast. That's a rate of, listen to this, 0.000007%. Almost nothing. And Trump himself along with nearly two dozen other senior administration officials, have all voted by mail before. Trump knows he can't win through our normal democratic process, which is why he's sowing distrust about mail-in voting and railing against fraud, so he can lay the groundwork to contest the election and claim it's illegitimate if he loses. Biden's response? Telling people to vote. His own... Homeland Security Director and as well as the FBI Director says there is no evidence at all that mail-in ballots are a source of, of being manipulated and cheating. They said that. And this is all about trying to dissuade people from voting because he's trying to, con to scare people into thinking that it's not going to be legitimate. Show up and vote. You will determine the outcome of this election. Vote, vote, vote. What we saw last night was not a debate. It wasn't an argument about issues. It was a confrontation between a decent human being and a lying sociopath. Let's move on to the second segment. That was really a pr productive segment, wasn't it?